Hi, my name is Patrick Letourneau. I'm a 3D artist and compositor from Winnipeg, Canada. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get set up in ACES with Cinema 4D as quickly as possible, with workflows for After Effects and Fusion. If you already know that you want to learn ACES, you can go ahead and skip this chapter, as the next five minutes are going over the benefits of ACES. So what is ACES, and why should we care about it? Well, basically it takes care of color management in such a way that your renders come out with better highlight roll-offs, better handling of colored lights, more pop. Um, it's just much, much nicer to work in, um, especially when it comes to bright lights and colored lights. Unfortunately, Redshift's support for ACES is not quite perfect, but we can get really close using input display transforms and output display transforms. And I'll get to those in a second. But just to show you what the difference here that we're going to run into is, we've got a little scene here with this um, person touching their eyeball uh, with their pinky finger sticking out. Uh, because reasons and we've got this brass ball here that I'm going to push in on and this is going to be the focus of our first test here so um, just looking at the highlights here they're looking pretty gross they've got this kind of colored highlight that rolls off very harshly uh, we get this weird red halo around it and here's aces so as you can see things are looking much nicer and much more filmic already um, you know your highlights are rolling off in this beautiful soft way they're desaturating really nicely um, and just overall feeling feeling much nicer. Uh, traditionally, maybe you would use photographic exposure uh, in this image here to try to clamp down those highlights. And yeah, that does a pretty good job, um, but you can see it washes out your image and flattens it down. And you might say, oh, I can bring that back with color correction. So, you know, we try some color correction here. We get, do some gain uh, up and gamma down, but you end up with the same problem. Your highlights get blown out. And it's not a lot of fun to try to correct for that. Whereas with ACES, everything just works by default. And if I pull out here and we look at this uh, human figure, you'll see, again, goes from this washed out figure to, you know, these beautiful, rich colored shadows here uh, and just an overall better feeling image. Uh, and again, photographic exposure. Like nobody wants to work with this as an output. It's, it's never fun to have to start with that. Um, so ACES will just get you there by default. I'll jump over to some more extreme examples here. So here we have a, sort of a night scene with uh, much brighter lights, much uh, more emphasis on color and sort of these nasty, nasty, harsh lines here. So let's push in on these two balls uh, and we'll jump over to aces here. And you'll see as I go back and forth that highlight roll off is really, really gross and kind of all merged together with a standard sRGB render. And with ACES, it's perfect. And the gradation on the ball is better. Everything just looks better here. And if we jump over to photographic exposure, you can see that uh, we were able to control those highlights, but the image just looks gross, looks all washed out. Again, you can try to bring that back with some color correction, but you're losing your highlights again. Whereas with ACES, things just work. So moving on to the character here, this is where it really starts to come in. With an sRGB view transform, you'll see this character just kind of looks washed out. And when we jump to aces, you can see the colored lights are doing their job. You can tell where the green light is, where the blue light is, where the purple light is. Um, whereas with sRGB, it's just not, it's not working. And finally, one more example here from the scene file we'll be working with in cinema um, are these arcade games with this uh, copywritten character whose name I'll let you guess. Uh, if we look at the sRGB version of this render, and if, especially if I push up here, you can see blown out highlights, kind of gross colored light that doesn't really feel correct versus aces. You can see everything perfectly exposed. Uh, it's the same with the blue and the green versions here. I'm just going to jump back and forth a few more times so you can see the, the contrast, especially looking around here at this uh, copywritten character's face. You know, you jump back and forth and it goes from this natural green light to that kind of gross weirdness. One important thing to note here before we jump into cinema is that there are two different ways to work with an ACES output. One, you can bake the ACES view transform into your render, or you can output an unprocessed image and reapply the ACES transform in post. You can see it here in Fusion. We'll be doing it in After Effects in a minute here. So if I were to take this image out of cinema with the ACES transform baked into it and say I wanted to um, change exposure. So let's crank the gain up and you can see almost immediately we get banding. Banding's nasty, we don't like it. If we were to compare this with 
taking the raw image, color correcting it, and then applying the ACES color transform on top of that, the results we get are much cleaner. You can see no banding in the forehead, no weird oversaturation. So while you can work with a baked output, it's very advisable not to in order to have maximum flexibility. And to further illustrate this, if I were to do some color correction to this, you know, bring in some blues, um, the baked image just does not have nearly as nice of a feel as redoing the ACES color transform in post. You can see every element here just feels so much better with this color correction applied versus baking it in. So to get started with ACES, you really only need to do two things. Uh, one is you need to install Open Color I.O. Open Color I.O. is going to let you apply this view transform that we saw in the images previously. Um, I will link to it in the description. You can get it off GitHub. Uh, I'll just link to a Dropbox uh, folder with a zip that you can unzip anywhere. I don't really care where you unzip it. Um, I just put it in the C drive. You know, it's nice and nice and easy to get to, short path. And the other thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to convert your diffuse textures. So because ACES is transforming the image a bunch, um, you're going to have to convert your textures to compensate for that. You only need to worry about transforming textures which contribute to the final pixel color of an image. So diffuse and specular color. In this tutorial, we're just going to do diffuse because honestly, nine times out of 10, you can get away with just transforming your diffuse texture. Now, this can be done externally through a program called Pico which I will link to in the description. This is great. Uh, I use it for my HDRIs. You can use it for your diffuse textures, um, but you know that's an extra step. So um, luckily Zeton on the Redshift forums has put together this great Xnode group that you can grab and uh, throw into your Redshift node graph and it'll do the conversion for you there, which has been a huge lifesaver. It's the game changer for me as far as I'm concerned. So I will link to the original graph by Zeton. I will also link to a cleanup version that I'm going to be using from this guy whose username I can't pronounce. And I will put on screen right now the path under which you need to install this. Now that you've got OpenColor.io installed and you've got the X group installed and you've restarted Cinema, which is going to be a critical point, we can just jump into the render view here and um, you'll open up this little gear guy here for the post effects and you'll see the display mode is set to sRGB here under color management. So the first step is going to be to change that to OCIO and then it's going to ask you for where your OCIO config is. So we're going to hit the little dot here and for me it's on my C drive, open color IO master and then you want to jump into this ACES folder here because this is where the config is and grab your config here and then the view transform will be set to sRGB ACES which is what you want. So just like that, we've got our display mode set up and you know we can jump back to sRGB, you know, with the with the washed out highlights and then back to OCIO, and you can see the changes there already. The next step is converting your textures. Um, so we're just gonna stick to the redshift graph method here. We're not gonna use this external converter just yet. So I'm gonna go ahead here and hit shift C to pull up the commander. I'm gonna type in pool to pull up the Espresso pool, which will contain the node group that you installed earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and dock this to the material editor because you will be using this a lot. So once that's docked there, you can just unfurl the ACES color um, node group and then grab this top level dude here and drop it in. And then we can actually we'll move this over here so we can see the effect here. You are going to run your diffuse map into that and you're going to run that into your diffuse color. And so it was a very subtle change. You might not have seen it. You might have to jump back and forth to see it. But basically the effect is, and I'll just plug this right into the output. Um, the effect is that the, um, the, the ACES transform is applied to your texture. And uh, you can see the difference here, quite a bit less saturation. You're going to want to do that because it's going to make the difference, especially if you're trying to hit brand colors. And I should actually uh, caveat this. Um, if you want to hit a brand color, you're not going to be setting your brand color in here if you're working in ACES. Um, the Cinema's color picker is from the Stone Age and doesn't have any sort of color management for us to work with. So if you need to hit a, that exact, uh, you know, the the dental floss brand's exact color of blue, um, just drop down a color constant node, you know, set your color in here, and then run that through an sRGB to ACES uh, conversion. 
uh, because you're otherwise you're going to be going back and forth trying to figure out why your color doesn't look correct um, and that's going to be the secret to that. So now that you've got the um, ACES transform applied to your diffuse texture you are good to go. Your, your colors are going to pop, uh, bright lights are going to be easier to work with, um, water is going to taste better, uh, estranged friends will call you back finally, everything's going to be great. The element we haven't talked about though is the output and the output has a couple more steps to it and we're going to get to that now beginning with After Effects unfortunately. But first we need to set up our settings in a way that lets us output a render that we can reapply the ACES transform to in post. I'm going to move over to my Redshift render settings here, I'm going to go to the AOV tab, I'm going to show the AOV manager, I'm going to drop down a beauty pass. In the settings, I'm going to enable direct output. That'll allow it to be output directly without going through Cinema 4D's picture viewer color processing. And I'm going to turn off apply color processing. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to turn off all of your post effects in Redshift. So your streaks, your flares, your blooms, uh, your color control, your LUTs. These things can be recreated in post and I would suggest you do that. It's not that difficult to recreate Bloom and Vignette in post. It's kind of where it belongs. Photographic exposure should never be on as a, as a side note. Uh, if you absolutely need to have your Bloom baked into your image, rather than disabling apply color processing in your beauty output, you can just come into your display mode here where it says OCIO and instead of using OCIO ACES, you can set it to linear, which is going to render out a linear image similar to what this would do, but with your bloom and with your flares and stuff enabled. If you do that, you won't need the beauty AOV. However, you'll have to remember to switch to linear every time you render, and I find that that's just a pain in the butt. So I'm just going to switch it back to OCIO here and re-enable our beauty with apply color processing turned off. And I'm going to hit render, and then we'll be ready to head over to After Effects. Okay, just get started in After Effects here. The first thing you're going to need to do is run over to FNord Software's blog and grab the Open Color IO for After Effects plugin. I will link to this in the description, and uh, yeah, go ahead and install that in After Effects. And with that render output, we will just jump over to After Effects here and we'll drop in our arcade machine renders. Uh, we're going to drop in the regular render as well as the beauty AOV. We'll use the regular render as reference. I don't know how you people use this software. Is it always this slow? <laughs> so we're just going to drop in our uh, clean render here. So this is right from the cinema output. You can see that we have aces baked in. Uh, colored lights are working. If we drop our beauty in here, the color processing off. So there are some caveats here in how we need to set up our After Effects scene file. We're going to jump over to the color settings and you're going to be wanting to be working in 32 bits per channel. No exceptions. If you work in 16 bits, you're going to get clipping. Stuff's not going to work out. Set your working space to sRGB um, in the drop down here and um, somewhere in this very long list. And once that's set up, you are pretty much good to go here to interpret the footage. So when you bring in our beauty AOV, we're going to want to go into the interpretation. You're going to want to remember the control alt G hotkey because I imagine you'll be doing this a lot. Hop over to color management and click preserve RGB. Um, so that's going to let it read this EXR in a straight up format. No color processing applied to it on the After Effects end. We're just going to put down a new adjustment layer here in our comp. And on this adjustment layer, we are going to apply the open color IO effect. Under configuration here, you're going to go custom, and then you're going to go back to that path that we set earlier. For me, it's on the C drive. Go into the ACES folder, grab your config. For the input space, we're going to set it to ACES CG, which is the color space we were working in. And for the output space, we're going to go to output, and in this case, sRGB. And then we'll just turn this off and compare it to the regular render here. Hey, looks like we did it. 
So that's it. You're working in ACES now. To drive the point home, I'll just put down another adjustment layer here. And on this adjustment layer, I'm going to put down um, an exposure effect. And we'll crank the exposure. So you can see things are holding up pretty well. Now, if I were to take this exposure layer and uh, have it happen after the ACES color transform has been applied, disgusting. So this is the power of applying your ACES transform in post, people. If I were to do this just to the, to the baked in image, you can see it has that effect too. Um, but yeah, this is why we work with the ACES transform in post. This is why we do not bake it into our renders. On the fusion end of things here, significantly less setup, we're just going to drag both our renders in. And remember, we're keeping our default Cinema 4D output here as reference. We're going to throw down a gamut node here just so we can see it with sRGB color applied. Um, fusion by default will display these EXRs linearly. Um, so yeah, here's our target. Uh, we were going to grab our AOV here, our beauty AOV with the color processing turned off. We're going to hit control space and we're just going to hit OCIO and we're going to see here OCIO color space. So we're going to throw that down. Uh, I'm just going to ask for the OCIO config file. We've done this before. You just navigate to where you've got your OCIO master, ACES 1.03, and then you grab your config OCIO there, hit enter. Under source space, we're going to take ACES CG. And under output space, we're going to find output sRGB. Um, if you work in Rec 709, obviously take Rec 709, but we're just going to do sRGB for simplicity today. Um, so yeah, hit 2 on this, and uh, looks like it's matching up perfectly. So we can throw down our color correction before the OCIO color space. That's where you're going to want to do all your color correction. You can see we can do all sorts of neat tinting here. Um, you know, if I were to take this pink tint and uh, throw it after the OCIO color space, uh, just does not work as well as putting it before. Um, same goes for, as you've seen before, you know, messing with the gain. Uh, if I were to just take this back here, you know, we've got a nice bright image here, maybe a little too bright, but, uh, you know, if we threw it after our OCIO color space, uh, gross. Uh, some effects, if you're using sapphire effects, they will want to be applied after the OCIO, co OCIO color space. Some of these effects just require sRGB or um, gamma to be applied. Uh, they just don't work uh, pre-transform, but yeah, you're good to go in Fusion now. So the one sticking point to this workflow is that this conversion node does not work with HDRIs that I've seen. Currently, I've been converting my HDRIs externally. And I've been doing that with the Pico Color Space Converter, which is a free tool that you can get on Gumroad. I will link to it in the description. So we've got an HDRI here from Maxim Raz, the very best HDRI creator in the galaxy. I'm just going to drag this into Pico here. And you can see under IDT, which is the Input Display Transform, it's set to None. For HDRIs, we are going to drop down this menu here. We're going to pick Utility Linear sRGB. We're going to apply to selection. Our export is going to be set to EXR, 16-bit half float, which is fine, zip compression, and we can either export to the same location or into a new folder. I'm just going to do it into the same location. Target color space will be set to ACES CG to begin with, so you don't need to do anything there. And we'll just hit convert. And just like that, we've got ourselves an ACES converted HDRI. You can do the same thing with textures if you prefer to ex to convert things externally. So if this were, say, a texture for a diffuse map, we would just do utility, texture, sRGB, apply to selection, now it's a texture, same process. So that's my ACES Redshift C4D workflow. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it's been helpful for you. Be sure to hit me up on Twitter at Polygon Sandwich on Instagram at Polygon Sandwich and check out my website polygons.ca. Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully I can answer them. Thanks for watching.